I've had the same experience too where I've had somebody come in who like was a full on like I don't believe the coronavirus is real I think it's a la 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 and they have it and then I have to explain to them that they're going to die wow and I have actually said you have 12 to 24 hours to talk to anyone you've ever loved give you a little wrap of what this is about beforehand yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah I like to just pick people's brains and uh, try to demonstrate a better way of like investigating ideas yeah. and so uh, either you can tell me something that's on your mind something that you think is true and hopefully this is something that informs your behavior mm. preferably on a daily basis maybe yeah. maybe it's just in the background of your mind or something that you care deeply about yeah I like to know what that is alternatively there's a survey that we can do, either yeah. way, works for me. Two things sort of immediately pop to mind. Um, I'm polyamorous. Okay. And I'm an ICU nurse who works with COVID patients. Okay. So I'll let you pick. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's so hard because I've been wanting to get a, um, a talk about polyamory. Okay. Um, but I've also been wanting to get a talk about vaccines and covid yeah. or just one of those yeah. oh man yeah, i could do both you could do both if you want yeah let's um oh gosh that's so hard because i i really do like both of those topics <laughs> i think though if i can imagine somebody listening they might be at least for right now probably more interested in the covid issue True. Just because it's so in everyone's face all the time. Yeah. Um, for sure. So maybe that direction might be the, right, the right sure. way to go for now. And then maybe we can bring up the, the polyamorous conversation either later today or tomorrow sure. before you leave. Sure. I would like to talk about that one too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, I think doing both in one sitting would be a bit. It would be a bit much, much all in one sitting. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially yeah. if I'm going to flush it out yeah. fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. No, no, no. So. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm an ICU nurse. I'm in. I work. Um, so I'm in a 30 bed ICU. You're in a 30 bed ICU. Yeah, there's 170 nurses. Okay. Um, and I had. How are you guys doing recently? It's rough. So is it is it filling up? Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So we. It's interesting because we see. So when it comes to things like vaccines and that sort of thing, I'm not objective in the same way. So on one hand, my, my very close experience with this, I think, gives me a perspective that most people don't get to see. For sure. Um, and I see the top 1% of all the worst cases, right? Right. So, so what I see in abundance is the worst end of everything. Largely hidden for me is the asymptomatic, it doesn't really matter kind of, kind of things. Yeah, you probably definitely see the worst of what's going on, being that you're on the front lines and in, in yeah. that in that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay. Was there something in particular, a direction? Because I'm trying to not lead you as best yeah. as I can. Okay. However, I have something in mind. Go for it. Uh, okay. Um, Right now, uh, there's this broad discussion in our in our culture about the vaccine, in particular. Sure. In particular, yeah. 
And just before this event took place, they mandated that all, um, in the state of Oregon, I think, that yeah. all people working in your field or in medical fields in right. general, right. Uh, they mandated that people get the vaccine. Right. And so what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, it, it's, a, it's a mix. They mandated that, that people in healthcare settings get the vaccine or, like, for example, OHSU. My understanding is that OHSU will actually put a sticker on you if you don't get it, right? That a very visible, like, I don't have the vaccine. <laughs> okay. Which is odd, right? Um, to, yeah. to say. And, yeah, I mean, the idea of... I, a lot of this has really brought up the question of, like, medical freedom, right? And, like, what does that mean? Medical freedom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, what is our what is our right to our own body as it relates to public health? So, here's a good example. There, there was a some time ago there was a woman in Portland who was an exotic dancer. She worked in a strip club, uh -huh. um, and she was diagnosed with a uh, XDR tuberculosis, meaning that it is a type of bacterial tuberculosis that is immune to almost every antibiotic. Okay. Right. There's a handful of microbiotics. And when they diagnosed her, she refused treatment. Right. So she wants to go back to work, getting lap dances and stuff, interacting with patients with a life-altering pathogen that is nearly impossible to kill. So the question right. is, does she have the right to do that? So, Good question. Right. Ultimately, now, what ended up happening is they went to a medical court, and they debated it for a long time, and she was detained and locked away, and they treated her, and then they released her. Now, the treatment for tuberculosis takes six months, so they forcibly detained the person for six months, fed her antibiotics, and then let her go. Now, that person, from a public health standpoint, is a tremendous danger to people around. To, um, to do you mind speaking public. a little bit more, oh, yeah, yeah. projecting a bit more, only because yeah. there's a lot of noise. Yeah, totally. And totally. I love what you're saying. So, yeah, yeah. So, so that person, right, represented a very tangible, very real danger to public health. Right. And we took away their sovereignty in order to resolve that danger. Yeah. Right. And I guess your question is: is that preferable or desirable, or right. is that good? Right. Essentially. Right. Yeah, that is a good question. It's it's an ethical conundrum. And I and right. I think that, that what we're experiencing right now is a lot of really shitty options. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and I think that it's kind of one of those things where I think everybody's looking around to try and figure out what the best solution is. Now for me, last winter I met a woman who was 83 years old who came in with COVID. And what happens with these patients is they come in walking and talking, right? Like you and I are right now. And then you're putting them on oxygen, and you're putting them on high flow oxygen. And then the next step is you put what's called a BiPAP machine on them, which is BiPAP is a by pressure. So it holds pressure while you breathe in, and then it holds pressure while you breathe out. And what that does is it forces the lungs open to oxygenate but it's loud, and it's like having a leaf blower strapped to your face. So it'll save your life, but you can only really be on it for a certain amount of time. Because you can't sleep. You can't put anything in your mouth to drink or eat, right? Like, people get delirious. They get confused as even where they are. Um, but it's literally the only thing keeping them alive. Right. And the next step beyond that is a ventilator, where we put a breathing tube down your throat. We right. sedate you. We just, like, tie you to a bed. And these patients will stay that way for two, three weeks, and 80 to 90 percent of them die. Wow, what a way to go, too! Yeah, because you're kind of alone in that situation. You are. We're we're the only people they see. The doctors don't go in the rooms. It's the nurses. That's it. Wow. So, I met a woman who was 83 years old, and the vaccine was just about to come out, and I hadn't quite. And her granddaughter went to an event like this, and then went home. And then went home. And gave her COVID. And gave her COVID. 
and when I met her, she was in the ICU, and we escalated up the various things with oxygen, and we got to that mask, and I said, you know, and partway through the night, she woke up from being confused, and ripped off the mask, and I busted into the room, and I pinned her down, and I held the mask on her face. Right. And she came to, and she looked up at me, and I said, if you want to live, this is the way to do it. Right. This is it. Like... This is how you is survive. She's right. like, okay, okay, I can do it. Right? And I think about... Nine days later, she was dead. So, when I... am so I, sorry to hear that. <laughs> I'm sure you have experienced that more than once. But that's that's the interesting thing, too. We had a... In last January, we had a 90% mortality rate for COVID patients in my ICU. 90%? 90%. So... Mortality rate? Mortality rate. For people who show up to the ICU. Yeah. Right. By the time you got to me... You yeah. had a nine in ten chance of dying. So every person that I meet right. and talk to like this, right. I know they're gonna die. So more recently, yeah. Uh, what percentage of people do you think are showing up to the ICU yeah. having had the vaccine versus not? A very low percentage. Um, about, very low yeah. comes in if they the vaccine. If they've have been seen vaccinated, this happened. Right. Um, basically, it's not a silver bullet. It's not a cure. It's not 100% right. preventative. What it does do is it pushes the needle so that right. the people that are getting sicker with the vaccine are older, have other comorbidities, conditions, that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and currently in the state of Oregon, OHSU just released that, you know, this thing that 5% of hospitalizations are vaccinated. 5%? 5%. So in Oregon? Yeah. Okay. So one in yeah. 20. So it's a much lower One in 20, percentage. that's really good odds, it sounds right. like. If you get this thing, right. your your chances of actually getting as sick as everybody else, right. like comparatively speaking, in the, in the ICU is one out of 20. Right. Gotcha. Right. And I, so it, 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 it's a interesting question of like, four weeks ago, we had one COVID patient. Three weeks ago, we had five. Two weeks ago, we had 14. Earlier this week, we had 18. 18? 18. 18. So and it's like that, exponential. Yeah. Right. And and usually what we see is a spike in new cases, new positive tests. And then a week to two weeks later, we see the flow of patients in. Right? Because right. typically the apex of the disease process is about 10 or 12 days. Right. So we're still seeing a spike in cases. Right. And these patients, when they come in, they often spend two to three weeks on a ventilator, which means that's a hospital bed that's not available to anybody else. Right. That includes car accidents, heart attacks, strokes, right? Trust me, so like when the when the pandemic first yeah. happened and the first lockdown took place, I was uh, in line for a surgery. Yeah. And then I could not get that surgery because it was, the, the hospitals were at capacity. Right. And then there are friends of mine on Facebook who are like the hospitals are artificially inflated, yeah, right. and they're making this yeah. conclusion based off of. I'm not even really sure. Yeah. I'd love to talk to them because I'd like to know how yeah. they're concluding that. Right. Um, though I had to wait three months longer than I, than I was scheduled to wait yeah. for my surgery, so that other people could live. Right. Right. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. Right. I'm going <laughs> to take care of myself other right. ways. Right. So it's a finite resource, right? Hospitals are designed to not have that much of a reserve because as a hospital, as a business, if you have 40 extra beds that you don't need, it's right. incredibly inefficient. Right. So when an outlier event happens, right, like a mass shooting. Right. Like, you need that available. Right. And you need a lot of it available, but you also don't want it to be inefficient and right. taking up resources when it's not right. in use. So right. there's like this fine line, it sounds fine like, balance. you have to walk. Yeah, exactly. Now, what's happened is, um, I ended up with PTSD. I know a Stress. lot of other people who did. Yeah. I mean, the story that I told you about that woman where I'm holding her down and, and forcing bet. a mask on her face, I bet, I've yeah. done that with a lot of people. Right? Yeah. And right. like, I, I've seen people alive and awake who became hypoxic because their lungs couldn't keep up and started breathing at 50 breaths a minute. Right. <laughs> it's right. been 12 hours interacting with that person. It soaks into your body. Right. And you and I, we had to right. take, 
we had to take a test to get to here. get here exactly so even just to be here we had to right. uh, to get a negative exactly. test well and obviously i'm here right right, right. and so. the test could be unreliable <laughs> for all we know but uh, it's the right. best we can do and that was that was a debate for me Right. Right. Like, do I... You were know, the vaccines uh, mandated for this festival? No. They, they were, were not. not. Just the test. Just the test. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was originally going to be, um, you either had the vaccine or you had a test. And then kind of towards the last minute, they decided that everybody needed to get the test. Right. Uh, including the vaccine. Which do you think is best? Vaccine or test? Yeah. Both. To Both. be honest. Both would be... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I... You know, it's one of those things, too, where, like, we have this very interesting perspective in our culture right now where we're very quick to feel very strongly about things. And I I don't... Even knowing what I know and seeing what I see, I don't know that I, like, can condemn people for not wanting to get that It's hard to condemn people. Yeah. You're going where I wanted to go, yeah. which was, I was curious to know your opinion as yeah. to whether or not, first of all, whether or not we should be an advocate for this mm-hmm. vaccine, right. and also, if the answer is uh, no, why is that? And if the answer is yes, mm-hmm. what's the best way to be an advocate yeah. that, for other people if they're re- if they're resistant or they're hesitant? Yeah. I think, too, that, like, in, in a very real way, I've, I've stepped back from engaging in those kinds of conversations because there's a lot there for me emotionally and psychologically. You're probably really involved already and right. preoccupied right. with the subject overall. You right. probably don't want to bog right. yourself down with even more of it. Right. That makes sense. And so, so, however, I think it's a matter of, like, what are the odds? What are we trying to prevent versus what are we trying to... Like, there is... Yeah, vaccines are not 100% safe. And there are side effects. And that does happen. Mm-hmm. And, like, and I don't know the exact rates on this vaccine. Mm-hmm. But it's an interesting question of, like, I think what frustrates me is particularly young, healthy people who are like, eh, I'm not going to take that risk. Right. But I am willing to pass that risk to another person. Right. In your example of this um, 80-year-old woman it sounds right. like in which you had to put the ventilator back on her face yeah it sounds like the way she caught it was from someone from she knew who had that attitude right who went to a festival like this right. one right and then I know. were they were thinking about themselves and how they right. did not need to take action and their inaction right. was a preventable cause right. for someone else right and I, there is also a big social media campaign right now that is designed at creating misinformation. So, like, a lot of the stuff that you see... I've had the same experience, too, where I've had somebody come in who, like, was a full-on, like, I don't believe the coronavirus is real, I think it's a la 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 and they have it, and then I have to explain to them that they're going to die. Wow. And I have actually said... You have 12 to 24 hours to talk to anyone you've ever loved. And watching that expression of, like, and I don't, like, how can I condemn that person, right? Like, at that point, it's too late. Right. And they, and they got duped. They got told a whole bunch of information, and they didn't realize, like, they didn't think it was going to be them, right? Right. And, and so... In that sense, like, yeah. And then, so, as I see them setting up the sound over there. Yeah. So, wrap this up. I'm gonna just get to my mo- more Please. important questions yeah. now, and then once we're interrupted, uh, <laughs> then yeah. we'll mer- carry on and maybe do the polyamorous talk later. Sure. Um, so, at, if it's true mm-hmm. that. Uh, we as a society would be better off taking the vaccine than not taking the vaccine. You may be too preoccupied to involve involve yourself too much with the advocacy of doing that, right. being that you already are neck deep in that whole situation right. as is. 
Though for somebody like me, yeah, who's interested in becoming um, more involved, yeah, uh, how could I do that? What do you think is the best way to involve myself or engage with other people? Um, I mean, I think getting it yourself. If you want to be pro vaccine, so if I've done that yeah, already, right? Then now what? Um, gosh. Like, let's say some I know a few people. Yeah. And they, yeah. And they are not taking it. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on on that? Like, think, how important should it be to me to to either strike up a conversation or or maybe maybe it's not a conversation. Maybe there's something else. Is there? What's the best way to be an advocate I for think, this if it's true? I think what you what you resist persists. So I think that actually I would, I'd be inclined to say like. Don't fight people on it. Don't fight people on it. We're we're so divided. We're right. so like hardening our hearts towards each other. We're so like I mean, I think giving businesses the right to choose whether or not they want to have vaccinated people in them or not, it's a great idea. Like, yeah. They they are an independent There it is. There it is. There's a sound. Alright man, well uh Okay, well, yeah. they're going to get there soon. Well, okay, so don't fight people on it. Yeah. And I mean, how I do we... Remain compassionate towards each other, right? Like, I see. Um, because that, that argument, that fight, is what's driving people into further silos. Right? Siloed. Right. Siloed communities yeah. are right. thinking a and certain way. And that's driving people to go and look for information that aligns with what they already believe. Right. right? Because they're looking to defend themselves from an outside attack. People are already seeking com- right. confirmation for right. their their own belief. So, if I were to ask them what it would take for them to be on the other side in the other silo, yeah. would that be would That's that an be? Idea. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, like what would be the information that would that would make you be okay with getting the vaccine? Yeah, right. I don't know anybody who like regrets it. Right. Right. Neither do I. And I know a shit ton of people that do regret not. Getting Right. Most of them aren't. I mean, a lot of them aren't alive anymore. A lot of them are not alive anymore. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I ultimately think it's in the interest of public health. Public health. <laughs> hey, man. It's been so good to Absolutely. get that opinion. I've been wanting I've been wanting that uh, <laughs> that interview with somebody of your caliber before. Thanks. So, can't thank you enough. And we'll pick this up at another time, yeah? That's good. Thanks. Yes. All right. Thanks, again. baby. All right, cool. Cool, thank you so much. That was great. Yeah, I really like that one. That was so far. Thank you. Oh boy. Uh, makes you think. What's the best way to talk to these people? Keep on doing this, I guess, right?